Two questions that have been thrown at me a couple times that that nail like the producer predicament. You know, one is, what are you doing? Are you making the best film, or are you making the director's film? And I'm making the best film. And I from I love supporting directors, and I'm sure directors watching this will say, well, wow, maybe we should go to Thomas Woodrow instead of you. I love supporting directors. I love being friends. I'm a pretty easy guy to get along with. But I'm trying to make the best film because it's too short, it, it's too hard of a process, it's too much of your life, it seeps into your relationships, it seeps into your Blackberry at 12 at night, it seeps into every part of your soul. You have to try to do the best you can for the final product to get it out there. And sometimes that's not what the director yeah. well, yeah. thinks. I mean, and the, the casting, we've talked about this in the Absolutely. past, you and I personally, mm -hmm. casting is very important. Yeah. Sometimes you just can completely not buy into it and I think as a producer and someone who's running the ship not just for production but for two years yeah. and for the self-distribution all things we're facing now you have to really do what's best for the film yeah, yeah there well, are times when it when I allowed the wrong choice in casting and it destroyed the movie destroyed. well at the, you know. at the end of the day it is ultimately a business and, and in order for it to sustain itself the producer has to be able constantly to evaluate it on that those terms so that's the other question right there which, which is uh, when, we, when we sold Wedding Banquet, um, we sat down with the distributor, Samuel Goldwyn, and he said, to, like, I want to understand something. Are, are you guys businessmen or are you artists? Well, and, and that question continually mm. ha haunts. Like, like the idea of like, it makes much more sense to build a slate of films, but I'm making my director's you know, movie and they want to, to, she wants to get the film made right now. Mm. So out it goes, our best project, out of the slate. See, for me, it's not about just getting the film made. I hear so many producers say that who are more accomplished than I am. Just gotta get it made. For me, it's get it as good as it can, as it can get because it is your life and you have to have a chance to succeed. It's more and more competitive. At the end of the day, like you said, whether it's the subject of one of your old movies or Eternal Sunshine or any of these movies, you have to have it be good, number one thing. If it's not good, it doesn't matter Even if it has better an opening. Than good. Like I always say, like Great. one of my yeah. statements is like, I'm destroyed if you make a good movie. Like <laughs> like I actually need that, that film that, that hits that ninety eight percentile. Right. You know, like we all know there's nothing like having a screening and I had one today that luckily went great. That that feeling when the audience loves the movie is what it, it's all worth right. it, isn't it? All the stuff oh, yeah. we put up it's with. What made you fall in love with the film? Like how? Like because and, and with producing films. Mm. I'm Cause, more cause, in love wait, with. Wait, I'm, wait, yeah. wait, because let's let's be real. Because you know nobody really knows what a producer does. Yeah. But it is a thankless task. She and I spend so much time <laughs> talking the producers off the edge. If yeah, Christine yeah. wasn't there for me, yeah, if no, Anne Carey, my, my other yeah, partner, yeah, wasn't yeah, there for me, my wife Vanessa wasn't there for me to kind of go through it, yeah. I couldn't keep keep going because yeah. it's a really hard I watched job. a very famous director a couple of nights ago here at Sundance go through their Q&A and not thank their producer, bring them up on stage. And I know that producer was devastated. And subsequently they realized what they did and they thanked him. But can you imagine you go through... Well, Five years. It's very thankless. Years and years and years. years. I mean, days, where are the extras? Where's the, you know, right. of abuse and emails and this and that and love and everything else. But, you know, it's, it's a thankless job. There's no questions. So, so there had to be that moment when you knew you were going to produce movies. Because it's not a rational decision. It's a completely, it's a moment of... I'm guessing of it, you always knew. <laughs> it's, a mo it's a moment of insanity. Where did, yeah. that, where did, where did, that, where did that kick in for you? I, I, well, it kicked in for me because I came from a... Um, I used to do camera. I used to work as a cinematographer. Really? So, yeah. Wow. Now so, that's, that's a transition yeah. I've never, I haven't heard before. Well, and, and, and I got... Ja and, you know, most of the time I was working as a camera assistant and lugging gear and it was just shit, you know. And uh, so, but what, what I realised was I wanted to do producing because I wanted to see in January the whole film in its totality that would be finished in December sort of thing. Like I wanted to see everything 
and and I love watching assemblies. I love yeah, watching assemblies just, when, when it's not you know, when there's no hand in it yet. Every it's just every info. detail of that budget. Very few people know how to watch assemblies. Is sort of is is something that is a part of putting together a picture, you know. And so that's why I wanted to be involved in the writing, and I wanted to do. You know, I, I do. I mean, I, I love shooting, so obviously. And it was that passion, that, oh. that passion for the entire process that, that kind of... Yeah, it's probably I'm a control freak too, and I wanted to be there then, as well as there, you know? Exactly. And not just in the yeah. six weeks in the middle. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I started really in theatre, you know, as an actor uh, in high school and college, and... Uh, I, you did those Russian plays? Uh, I did. I did everything. I did musical theater. My parents had the VHS tapes to prove it. Really? Uh, absolutely. They going up on YouTube tonight. <laughs> they're, they're, being, they're, being, they're being released in conjunction with Sundance today. They're available. Um, no, but and what I loved about theater was the was the collaborative and cyclical process of it. That you would go into the process of doing a play and be like, oh, we should do Fiddler on the Roof. No, we could. We could never do Fiddler on the Roof. Forget about. Wait a what? Actually, if we, if we did, you know, you started to start to put it together, how it would be possible. And then you sort of get closer, and then you get tired of it. And you think it's never going to come. There are all these disasters that happen. The lights don't work. Somebody's fake beard falls off. Somebody falls into the orchestra pit, whatever happens. And then, you, you know, you... And then it happens opening night. And, of course, the moment of greatest doubt is the moment right before that. The moment when it seems the least possible that you'll ever make it is the night before in the tech. Because everything falls apart. And then you find it, finally kind of come together and look at each other, you know, before you're going to go up the next night. You're like, well, here goes nothing, is pretty much you say. Pretty much what you say. And then it somehow miraculously comes together. So you yeah, saw the spontaneous, this, the, the, yes. the process that yielded the result. But how do you get to film? <laughs> well, I, I had done this, you know, uh, summer program at RADA in London and saw that th what theater culture is there. That you can go into a you know, a hundred different, not a hundred, many, many different theaters in London on any given night of the week and see something for a democratically priced, you know, t 10 to 15 pounds. And but in a, America. And an incredible dialogue between, you know, the theater and the, the, the populace there. But in the United States, that's not so. We don't have publicly subsidized theater. We have film. There's no agreed upon center of American culture as we see in the culture wars of the 80s. You know, there's, nobody's going to agree that, that it's cool to, for, for the entire country to fund theater in New York. But... People will all pay f to go see movies throughout the country that are produced in New York or LA or wherever. Attendance is up twenty percent. Hmm? Attendance is up. Well, it's 20%. funny, you know. On that note, there's a company here that produced a big competition movie for a lot of money that's has a Broadway hit, and I, I, I was talking to the person last night, and Broadway, they happen to be making a lot of money on, and the film business happens to be very challenging, so their business is shifting completely you know, towards the Broadway side and expanding that. But I just say, I was just going to say, I am different from most producers because I don't probably know as much of than I, you know, as a lot of you about film and about the history of film. I don't profess to be a cinephile. I didn't go to film school. I went to law school. I didn't I, go to film school. Uh, you know, I worked for I, my job. <laughs> I did. I worked. I worked as far away from film as you could. I worked for Peter Gabriel, the singer, who's a brilliant guy and a lovely guy, and, uh, and a big endorser from the very beginning of kind of multi-platform and of fans filters media. and, and the idea. film activism. Totally. What he what he turned me on to was the idea of filters and the idea of people like Christine Vachon and Ted Hope being out there filtering for the rest of us what they like and maybe you know building villages with people who filtered great restaurants, great books, great literature, great films. I never grew up loving, loving films. I didn't know I had to do it. I love sports and I was successful in the sports world as a writer from 18, 19 on and that was my career and I was going to be on camera and I got really bored of it and I said I stopped liking this, doing it every day. Yeah. And I made a full circle. I was a lawyer, and I came out to L.A., and I was going to be a pro football agent. And uh, I never wanted to really be an agent, and I got it to ICM, and, and it started from so there. So you came from the agents to, into the agency? I came as a lawyer. I, I came, you know. Was it I didn't, love of the deal? I didn't have a family. And, no, it's not the love of the deal. It's the love of teamwork. And for me, it's like with risk cutters. It's the love cutters, of process. Process. With douchebag, process, with risk cutters. Process, taking an process. Idea, taking That's an idea, what we just learned. Getting a script, great. It's the best, and, and then doing smart business with it and making a great final product. To me, it, my dad used to say to me all the time, I love my dad to death. He's, he's um, amazing. You hear that, guy. dad? 
I love him. Um, he uh, he was a Feel doctor for 50 years in the same office. He used to say whenever I saw a movie, was there anything redeemable about it? Is there anything that's staying with you? Is there? He would always say the same thing, whether it was a comedy, a drama. Yeah, and dresses. I still think about that. And I still think about that because, like you guys, I watched my films 200 times. You have to edit it. You have to screen it. You have to watch it constantly. That right there is the hardest part of the process. It is. And I realized today watching my film Douchebag, it makes me cry. And, and it's a comedy. And it makes me cry at the end of the movie every time as did Risk Cutters and when I can watch one of my movies over and over then I'm proud and it doesn't matter if I don't make any money but that's the great, I mean look that is the great thing about film is every couple years what I've seen is we do have all these ways this data of figuring out what movie is going to be successful and then every couple of years field. something Changed. just yeah. comes out of left yeah, field totally. and no one saw it and it just blows up everything yeah. and becomes like the zeitgeist movie mm. and you can't predict it mm. and, it and just, it's on the right and it's on the left mm. it's on the all over the place right? here's to that mm. here's here's to thank to you that. guys thank you very thank much you guys. Thanks. Thanks. Cheers. 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 Cheers.